Troglodytes, and welcome back to another video. So, in today's episode, we will be taking a look at the original Raspberry Pi. This is the first one. The original one. This has an ancient single-core uh, CPU on it. I believe this model has 512 megabytes of RAM, so not a whole lot. And in this episode, we're going to see what can it do. So, yeah. It's old. It's slow. Um, but theoretically, the modern, the latest version of Pi OS with like Wayland and everything should still support this in some fashion or another. So, let's see. Raspberry Pi 1. <laughs> oh god. Raspberry Pi 1. Let's see. Raspberry Pi OS Legacy. Um, bookworm. Okay, Debian Bookworm is the latest. Um, okay, Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. Alrighty then, so this is the moment of truth. I don't even know if it still works, like, this is the pie that started it all. The OG. <laughs> Alright, Grandpa. Let's see if you'll fire up and plugging in power. Plugging in power. Uh, right, power is connected. Oh, I have a light. Oh, something's happened over here. Okay. That clock fell down, it's okay. Just make sure the power doesn't get unplugged. It's kinda a little fiddly there. All right, it's sinking. Man, I remember, this is back in the days when they still had like the penguins to show how many CPU cores you had. Oh boy. Yeah, I remember this. This was nostalgic. Ooh, it has all the LEDs. That's cute. Like activity, power, link. 10100? Is it only 10100? So, okay, so all the LEDs on the device are a flashing. They're a singing, they're a banging, they're a dinging, they're a donging. It's giving me something. <laughs> this is going to take a while, I think. But clearly, it is doing something. Maybe activity is disk activity? It must be. Yeah, because you can see. Yeah, because you can see here, here are all the lights. So they're, they're blinking. Oh, something happened. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it turned off. Put this, oh, okay, so that, that went back there. Oh, okay, it's blinking, activity power, we still have power, okay. The rest of the lights came on. We have a prompt over here. Turn this back to HDMI. Okay, um, hello, welcome to the, the Raspberry Pi desktop. Alright, so we still have all the lights here. Oh, oh, it's doing something. It's doing something. It's doing and starting the services. It's booting, boys! Oh god. Do I have my keyboard turned on? There we go, okay, turn on the keyboard. Oh, it's, it's starting all this stuff. It's starting all this stuff. Oh, this is exciting. This is very exciting, okay. Uh, starting kernel command. It, it's doing things, okay? It's doing things. Like, look at this thing, man. Look at how, how dingusy this thing is. Okay, this uh, power right here, this uh, power plug, it's very loose. So that's um, we have to be careful with that. So yeah, this is exciting. Oh, okay, it's starting up the sound card. Save, restore sound card state. Oh my god, this is taking a while. 
So again, I really wish they would still have like the penguins up here, you know? Like, why did they get rid of the penguins? I mean, I guess maybe because you have like 128 core CPU, so the penguins just go and like the entire screen would just be filled with penguins. Would you actually be able to see any of the important text? But you know, the screens are also a lot higher resolution, so you could just make the penguins smaller. Oh sh shit! All right, we're in. So let's see um, if we can still do anything with this. Gee, just hit enter. Just clear all that. All right, up, oh, up. Oh, it, it's uh, what? What did I do? What the fuck did G do? What? Did I turn it off? <laughs> what? <laughs> I typed G. <laughs> Was that a command? <laughs> oh, did it reboot? What's happening? <laughs> what is happening? Welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Desktop? Yeah, there's it's a command line. So, okay, so what I was going to try to do was type in start x and see, because that's what you would classically do when this thing was first a thing, when you wanted to boot the desktop. Just type start x, so it would fire up the x server. And a bada bing, a bada boom. It will uh, start. Man, I don't know. Oh, oh, fuck. Okay, we have a picture. We have a picture. <laughs> we have, we have the, we have the desktop background. It loaded the background. <laughs> okay, we have the waste basket. Okay, slowly loading the desktop. Okay, we have desktop power. Is it power limited? Okay, we have internet. We have internet. Yes, yeah, CPU usage. 100! <laughs> oh no! It's just, it's just pegged. And full steam ahead. Okay, terminal opened. Old man trog. Alright. Okay, so, um, sudo apt update. Oh, okay, it's going. All right, can we update the system? All righty then, so, we have our overclock, he's dialed in. Well, it's, unless it's set, I don't know if it'll work. Um, I've plugged in a fan to the five volt header on the GPIO pins. I've just kind of tacked a little heat sink on there with some thermal compound. I've just kind of placed the fan on there, how it will sort of want to sit. And uh, yeah, so let's see what'll happen. When I go and plug this thing in. All right, okay, we're just gonna have to sit like that. That'll be fine. All right, moment of truth. Will it explode? Did I plug the fan in wrong? In three, two, one. Sweet, fan is working. That's a good sign. Firefox. <laughs> okay. Firefox. It's here. Can I can I do anything? We're gonna have to install one essential add-on here. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's um It's thinking. We might need oh it crashed. <laughs> All right, <laughs> it said no. So let's try this lovely little web browser called Lynx. 
um, which I just googled about a minute ago and it claims to be a command line based web browser so I can I can run it from my command line so let's let's see all right Google okay let's um, let's go to a Google search I do a Google search for my web browser uh, never rejecting rejecting your oh, I just I'm just gonna hit never um, never, never, never. Google search. Yes, okay. Arch wiki. Never. Direct all your cookies. No. Alright. Now we're browsing the web <laughs> through the Lynx web browser. This is kind of cool. Um, it's super awkward. Man, okay. So, we're into Wikipedia. All right, that's kind of cool. Um, oh my god, blah, 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 blah. Repositories, Arch Linux. I'll go to the table of contents. So what if I wanted to look at um, Pac-Man? All right, all packages are maintained using Pac-Man, a package manager written specifically for Arch Linux. Pac-Man handles packages, installation, upgrades, downgrades, removal features, automatic. It does all the things. You can do repositories. You can do testing repositories. You can do core staging. Do all this stuff. That's pretty cool. All right, so after much futzing around, I have now installed another web browser the Midori web browser. So we tried Lynx. That was interesting, to say the least. But now we have Midori, which I think was uh, what this originally would have tried to have shipped with back in the day. So let's see if this will be any any better <laughs> than Firefox, which is just like not really optimized for something this slow. Okay, so that, that works. Can it go to YouTube? <laughs> Can this thing do anything on the modern web? We know it sort of came through links, but that's not really a particularly usable option. Maybe? Uh, I mean, for if you only want to read text, and I guess you can download. There's a lot you can do with that. I've never used it before, and I don't really want to use it again. So, I'm curious, can I do graphical things um because i don't want to browse the internet from my command line although it's cool that i can i want to browse the internet from right here and it's uh it's trying its best to load oh oh wait no it, it did something it did <laughs> It's trying. No, it's doing it. It's loading YouTube. Slowly but surely, it's loading. It's loading the YouTubes. Oh my god, this is crazy. Yeah, boy! <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> it runs me fetch. Alright, I have some really... F I have... I have more plans for this in the future. I think it'll be fun to try, so. Yeah. That's an introduction to the original. Okay, yeah, so this is a Raspberry Pi Model B Revision 2. So it's not the original original, because the original original Raspberry Pi had 500, and, no, 256 megabytes of RAM. 
which is not a lot of RAM. So, so yeah, we have this. It tried its best, and yeah, maybe I'm just, I've been looking at this through, when I was planning this video, planning this video, thinking, ooh, that would be a fun idea. I was looking at this thing through rose-tinted glasses, um, because, I mean, it definitely felt a lot crazier back in the day, but I guess time has caught up to it, and it's, it, 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 it tries, so, it's trying its best, but, I have more ideas for this. I have one more idea for this. I at least want to try to try. So, um, yeah. One more idea. One more project with this thing, and then I think I'll put it away. Yeah. <laughs> CPU. One. <laughs> All right. Well. I guess that answers that question. What can you do with a Raspberry Pi, the original Raspberry Pi-ish, in 2024? I'm not much of anything that requires modern internet. Can't really do that. Uh, not a whole lot that requires modern applications. Can't really do that either. Not a whole lot that requires a desktop environment. Pretty much everything that I did that actually worked, I did through the terminal. So, um, there is that. Like, you know, we have our, our old links here. That, you know, that works. That works pretty good. It served its purpose back in the day. And nowadays, it's not super useful anymore for anything that requires a graphical environment. Because again, everything we did that actually worked was through the command line. So the command line, that's its only saving grace. Running an entire desktop environment is just way too much CPU overhead for the single core. So again, as I've mentioned many times, and I've probably cut out of the video, this thing it was never intended to run a full desktop environment. This thing was never intended to be a personal computer. So it's really interesting to see how these things have evolved over time, because this is marketed as a personal computer. And it kind of can be a personal computer, although I wouldn't recommend it. Um, get like a mini PC instead. But yeah, they've evolved dramatically over time. I'm so glad we, I can use this now and I don't have to keep using the Raspberry Pi 1. But again, I have one more project that I want to try with this thing. And yeah, so that's about it. See ya!